Pen and wash can form the basis for some great little paintings. Quick and spontaneous, you can do them almost anywhere. They can be moody and dramatic, fast and loose, soft and atmospheric, or simply a way of recording information. The great thing about pen and wash is that it teaches you all the big lessons, the important things about balance and composition, contrast and variation, and it does it at a much faster pace than larger finished works. Plus it's great fun. Our subject for this project is this little corner cafe. Pen and wash often employs a limited palette, but we're going to extend our palette to four colours to do justice to this colourful subject. Before we get started, let's just have a look at the things we'll need to do this project. We will use a number two rigger brush, a quarter inch flat brush, a one inch flat brush, and an old two inch bristle brush, the sort you find in the back of the garage cupboard. The colours we will need are ultramarine blue, thalo blue, or Prussian blue will do if you don't have thalo, permanent alizarin crimson, and quinacridone gold, or Indian yellow if you don't have quinacridone gold. We'll also need some burnt sienna ink, a water spray, some white gouache and a small 1 8 sheet of watercolour paper. Now let's get on with our project. We'll go in straight away with pen. Don't muck around with pencil. The beauty of these little pen and wash paintings is that they're quick and spontaneous and if we fiddle around with the pencil first we sort of lose that spontaneity. Don't worry if some of your lines are in the wrong spot. If you look as I draw here there's lines all over the place. It's just a matter of correcting them as you go but try and keep them nice and crisp and confident. And the secret to that is nice quick movements from your arm or your elbow, not from your wrist. Little tiny lines can be done with finger movements, but most of the lines are a fairly sweeping stroke. Our first wash we'll put on the darks first of all. So some ultramarine, a little bit of guanacridone gold and some alizarin. Mix it up into a nice strong dark. You'll notice I go straight from one colour to the next without rinsing the brush in between. I find this is the best way to get nice strong darks. We'll work our way around all the, all the dark spots in the painting just to give it a bit of definition first up. Next we'll put on that yellow wall. It's a fairly strong yellow but we've diluted it slightly with some ultramarine and a little bit of alizarin. more ultramarine for this end wall. Terracotta roofs are just a mixture of quinacridone gold and alizarin. You can see how this one inch flat brush cuts around the shapes very easily. A little bit of ultramarine added to the mixture to do the shutters. Now we'll mix up some quinacridone gold and thalo blue this time to do the awnings. Fairly pale wash at first. While those awnings are still wet we'll drop in a little bit of stronger green, just a bit more thalo blue mixed into the colour. Back to our small brush again, this is a quarter inch brush and we'll put some detail into these distant buildings. A stronger grain, we can put some windows into the ends of these shapes here. This 
this pizza sign in the photograph is a nice strong mark of red right where we want it, right in the centre of interest. So we'll put that in and splash a little bit of red around the focal point there. Suggest a couple of figures in against this yellow wall. Anywhere you get nice strong contrast you can put some in. Just very simple shapes. Spread these reds out a little bit. We'll put a wash through the foreground now just to hold your eye in around the centre of interest. A bit more grey over these buildings will push them back a bit further. While we're at it, we'll work on the sky. The same bluey grey can be scrubbed in there. We'll use our two-inch brush now. Fairly cool grey, and just work it over the area. Fairly wet, then dry your brush off and sort of feather it out. As it dries, it'll become much more subtle. warmer grey now, just to put some shadow into these end, end walls. Back to our one inch brush so we can cut in a little more accurately. Put the colour on as a fairly strong grey then just using a damp brush spread it out and allow it to feather. Okay we'll work some more ink back into it now. The nib we're using is a, just a plain old post office nib. We'll just put some detail in around where we put those figures. Suggestion of chairs and tables and little bits and pieces like that. Anything you can put in to add interest to that area. We'll get some ink on here and spray it with our water spray. You can see how it's feathered out. It's fairly wet now and as we put the ink on it bleeds out and gives it a nice soft line. Some detail into the shutters. And that's how I left a few of those strokes out, just makes it more interesting. Just a few lines will suggest some detail in these distant buildings. Just a suggestion, not, not overworked, not too much detail. Some TV aerials, satellite dish. Another wash of thalo blue and quinacridone gold over those awnings. You know, we'll darken the road a little more, just a neutral grey, wash it on, feather it out. Then wash out your brush and dry it off so it's, it's fairly dry and just pick along that edge just to soften it. Back to our quarter inch brush and we'll put a little more detail in there. Now we'll use our rigger brush or our liner brush and put some detail in with some gouache. White, this is just pure white gouache. last thing is just extend these buildings out towards the right hand side. The thing I like about these little pen and wash paintings is that you can play around and experiment and discover all sorts of techniques that will spill over into your other paintings. The other thing is they produce a quick result and for people who have difficulty finding time to paint they're the ideal solution.